what are the best weapons to use, how do we cut that time down, how do we beat our personal best. I mean, we're looking at everything, right? We're looking at reviews, we're looking at player feedback, uh, we're looking at what people do. And I think the most important thing for us is to watch what players do and say in the game. Like, do they love it? What don't they love? How can we address it going forward? So we knew with something like Destiny, we had an opportunity to, to lay a really good foundation, but then to build on it. So like I said, we've done uh, 12 updates now, so we're not slowing our pace down. We want to make sure that everybody who's playing, uh, if, they're, if they've got feedback, we can hear it, we can listen to it, we can prioritize it, we can put it into an update. Everything from things like Iron Banner to end game gear to material farming, all the way down to like little UI tweaks, little things that uh, we've noticed, you know, post ship that we can go in and address. So uh, we're going to keep making content like the Dark Below, but we're going to keep uh, doing support and sustain activity as well, uh, working with the team and working with the community to make sure that the game is as good as it can be. Uh, I don't really get too surprised by player behavior anymore. You know, like, like uh, people will come up and say, "Can you believe they're doing this?" And it's like, "Yeah, I can totally believe it." I mean, players. Uh, of all types will try to do all kinds of fun things in the game, everything from sparrow surfing to breaking the raid to getting through the campaign as quickly as possible to finding ways through the investment system to uh, you know, speed running a strike. So those, those are you know, player behaviors and activities that we expect. Uh, we certainly want to take advantage of things that are emergent, so we know there are going to be surprises. So maybe, maybe the true answer is yes, we're surprised, but we're not surprised that we are surprised. So our goal is to make sure we're nimble enough that we've built a system that we can take advantage of those things. When we see players surfing a sparrow, we can make something like the tumbler sparrow to enable them to do some more tricks. So uh, a lot of that is reactive, and some of it is stuff we can forecast too. We can sort of see early on, like, oh, okay, we can make this better going forward, you know, from our own experience playing the game. We certainly knew it was one of the most uh, challenging experiences we had built. So our goal wasn't to make something so hard that nobody could beat it. We wanted to make sure if you had a competent team of friends uh, that could uh, play roles, that could uh, commit some time to the experience, that could level up through the, you know, the investment gear to get to a competent level in the game, that you could crack it if you spent enough time with it. So I think the first uh, uh, raid completion was something on the order of 13 or 14 hours. Uh, we're seeing them now happen in under an hour. Uh, I think that's, that's, that's fine by us. I think it's pretty cool that players keep going into them, that they're fun in their own right, that they're finding, you know, trying to find additional chests, trying to find little secrets. They're going in there and that they're just sort of fun in their own right. Uh, and I think we expect to see the similar behavior to Crota's end. I think this time around, players are a little bit ahead of us. They know what to expect, so they got their six-man teams ready to go. So it'll be really interesting to see how long it takes them this time around. So I mean, part of the goal of the raid is just to really give them something really challenging and, and unique. So you can have a set of expectations we build through the campaign and through strikes, and then the raid can just openly defy them. So I think that there's a lot of fun in that. It becomes about execution, right? The, the, the big part is figuring out how to solve the puzzles, how to defeat the bosses, how to move the stages forward. And once you've got that under your belt and you've got you know, six people who can all do that, and it's just about execution. And then it becomes about what are the best weapons to use? How do we cut that time down? How do we beat our personal bests? that sort of thing, which is really cool to see as well. Uh, and, and also we're seeing a lot of uh, what the community started calling Sherpas, people that go out there and take people who haven't done it before, guide their friends who haven't experienced it and are sort of telling them like, no, 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 you really have to try it. I'll get you through it. And those take a little bit longer, but we've seen a lot of people uh, exhibit a lot of patience, helping people sort of get up to speed and do extra raid runs. And I think uh, I don't have the exact numbers of completion to date, but they're way higher than I would have anticipated. I had some educated guesses uh, when people were asking me, and it turned out it was like, like 10x what I thought. You know, these are not supposed to be incredibly accessible, and yet we're seeing a lot of players go through them and complete them over and over again too. So it's really cool. You know, initially I thought it was sort of like the Dark Souls effect, right? Like a lot of our team was playing a lot of these more difficult, more challenging games. And I think with the raid, that is sort of the, the approach is to, to stop thinking about the shooter in terms of accessibility and think about it more about what just like what can we do in the space? What's what's innovative? What's in, what's inventive? What's going to defy players' expectations? You know, what's going to make the players smile when they figure out what you're doing and they figure out how to you know thwart you and your design? Uh, and I think that there's some some real magic in that. And I think uh, you'll see some of that stuff making its way into the dark below as you play the Eris campaigns. You'll see a little bit of that hop on sort of mentality, a little bit of the more challenging design uh, cues. It's not a full raid, obviously. It's a story campaign, but I think we're going to be a little bit more adventurous going forward. So.
That was a pretty sweet video, right? If you want to see more, go to Games Radar's YouTube page over here. Or if you want to read, maybe up your game a little bit, go to GamesRadar.com.